Well, from James to one of James's favorite creatures, the Topi. Well, I don't know whether he likes Topi or just likes saying the word, but there we go. Uh, we've got a, a nice male Topi atop a term termite mound, uh, checking for lions and, of course, also checking for any potential rivals to his little patch. So, Topi you will often find on top of these termite mounds, surveying the, the distance. Um, eggs, if you come this way and we look into the distance, almost every large termite mound in the distance has a large topi standing on top of it. See, there we go. So you can see as we, we're moving down, we're right next to the Mara River now. So we're going to start seeing a few more antelope. I'm really hoping there's a big group of, uh, yesterday there was a big group of Thompson's gazelles in this area. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to keep moving through here. But there we go. Almost every big termite mound's got a topi on top. And uh, I did promise I was going to show you a new species of water buck today. And uh, we, have, we have found them. And they are called Defasa water buck. So unfortunately they're not showing us their rear ends at the moment. So they don't have the white circle on their bottom. They've just got a pale bottom instead. Oh, it's just so much to look at. What bird is that now? There's a fish eagle on top of the tree line, just to the left of the topi. A bit higher than the topi. We've got, it looks like a juvenile fish eagle. Hasn't quite got his adult plumage just yet. So as I said, we're, the Mara River is just beyond those trees. And as we meander a bit further, we're going to get closer and closer. Remember, hashtag Safari Live if you've got any questions for us. And uh, we would love to hear from you. Now, Zanda just was being quite poetic. Um, he says, I, I finally figured out how to describe Kenya. And I was like, okay, Eggsy. Oh, there we go, calling. And I was like, okay, Eggs. How do you describe Kenya? Ken, uh, and, and Zander says to me, it's like falling in love. He says, I feel the same way when I look around as we drive through the Maasai Mara as I do when I look at my girlfriend. Isn't Zander so sweet? He's blushing now. He's going red in the trees. <laughs> Hi, Shannon. Shannon's wondering, uh, are there wild dogs in this area? They are seen very, very rarely, I think twice in the last five years. But in the north, on the other side of the river, um, they're seen a bit more frequently. So who knows, hopefully I'll bring a bit of wild dog luck and they'll come back for another visit. So actually the, the first time wild dogs were seen in many, many years was on the site where Angama is being built. And then the next time they were seen was just below Angama. So if we're going to see them, it's going to be close to home. Okay, so let's just go a little bit further forward. And as I said, we're right up against the river now. So we're on the floodplain. And that area where you saw the water back, that's actually an, uh, an old Mara River bend. So the, the river has changed its course. It's quite a young river with very steep banks. So it's sort of constantly changing every year, depending on the rain, as it cuts away at the, at the, at, at the banks. I'm trying to see. Oh, no, it's flying too fast. But as I said, we're getting into this area. We're going to see a lot more. Uh, uh, antelope now and uh, of course where there's antelope there's always a good chance of predators but also we should be seeing quite a few more birds let's just jump up here now hi African bush lover African bush lover is wondering will we be venturing into that wooded area uh, we will venture around the edge of it uh, it is a protected area there's very very little of that ecosystem left so there's no driving into that wooded area, but we, we, do, we, do, we can go along right along the edge of it. So we, we will try to go along the edge of it. And um, there's certain spots where you go to sort of picnic sites or campsites that do go into, into that wooded area. But, uh, but generally, uh, we, we stay on, on the edge of it. And historically, that this wooded area was all along the Mara River. But slowly, as climate has changed, and over the last sort of thousand years, it, it, it's really, really limited to this, this, this section of the Mara Triangle uh, and uh, the other side of the river in the Mara National Reserve. And 
it's, it's sort of the only sort of proper riverine forest that's left, uh, this type of riverine forest that's left in East Africa. So it's very important that we, we, we look after it and, and conserve it. So unfortunately we won't be going deep into it, but we will be hanging around the peripheries. Now, who's ready to see an Impala on steroids? So we've all seen our lovely Impala that we get at, at, at Juma and in, in the Sabi Sands. Now we're going to have a look at a male East African Impala uh, that has horns that look like they belong on a kudu. Okay, tell me when. Eggs? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good? Yeah. So there we go. We've got some East African Impala. Now, of course, they, they are the same species of the Impala, but due to the, the nature of this incredible uh, grassland mosaic that we have here, their horns get much, much bigger. Look at that. There's, there's Inyala and Kudu in the Sabi Sands that would be jealous of a set of horns like that. Now, on average, most of the animals are, are, are bigger than what you would get in the Sabi Sands, even the same species. And the reason being is because of this lush grassland. So they get a lot more nutrients from, from what they feed on. And, and that also means that their territories are generally a bit smaller. They don't have to travel as far to get food. No, that is a stick. Sorry, I thought I saw something. Now, we are coming up to this area called Majandege, so water of the birds. And it is another one of these sort of extinct oxbows off the Mara River. And that's where we're going to be finding a lot of animals at this time of the day. And as we start moving back towards Angama, the elephants will start moving towards this area as well. Ah, isn't that funny? So there we go, this is the Maja and Dege uh, campsite, but it looks like a warthog, I would guess, just from, 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 the, from the size has decided the signpost is a great place to rub its bottom. So there, there are campsites in the River Rhine Forest, so that, that looks like the, the warthogs have decided that's a good place to have a scratch after a wallow. Well, while we go try and get closer to the wallow and see what incredible birds we can find, let's go to a little creepy crawly with eight legs.